chat, please. Great. <laughs> so just turn off your camera if you're not comfortable with that. All right. So I'm going to go over the agenda for the evening. And then I will turn it back to Sheila for to present the master plan process for the overall Central Park. So Sheila will give that process recap as well as show you the master plan that was adopted in 2018. And then I will give you a review of the outreach that's happened on the playground project up to this point. And then we'll briefly go over the existing conditions of the playground site. And then that will be followed by the concept designs that we've been working on. And then we will have the discussion and survey so we can get your thoughts on the concepts. And then we will wrap up with the next step slides where we'll talk about where we go from here. All right, Sheila, it's all you. So thanks, Gina. So um, one of the questions that we asked on our registration form was, have you participated um, in any of the previous um, Central Park Master Plan uh, meetings? And the vast majority said no. Um, and so uh, while we can't start the movie um, from the very beginning again, I did want to just spend a couple minutes recapping how we got here, because I do think that um, this has been, as you can see from that very first slide starting in 2014, this has really been a journey um, that we have been on since then. Um, I think that, you know, for all of you who um, live in San Mateo and who visit Central Park, I think we all recognize that Central Park um, as, and as much as I love every park that we have in San Mateo, I think by um, so many um, people in the community that Central Park is really the jewel of our system. Um, next year, it will be 100 years old. And so we're hoping to plan um, some centennial celebrations. So um, it was actually back in 2014 that we started to talk about the need to upgrade the, the playground. Um, the current playground is now about 30 years old, and that's what we consider the new part. Um, there is still a section um, over in the sand area with some metal equipment that really dates back to the 1950s. Um, so we knew back in 2014 that we wanted to um, plan for updating the playground. But we also thought that maybe we should step, take a step back and look at the opportunity to say maybe the playground needs to be in a different place in the park um, before we invest a lot of money um, in upgrading it. So that's when we um, really began the process of updating um, the Central Park Master Plan. And if you think of a master plan as really a blueprint and a roadmap for future park improvements. Um, and so it really um, provides us the, um, the, the roadway so that as funds become available, we can make those improvements. Um, so we started back in 2014. Um, that's when we brought on RRM Design Group um, to be our partners in this. Uh, we had probably, oh, I would say eight community workshops and focus groups. And this was just really a gathering, information gathering uh, period. Uh, tell us what you like about Central Park. Tell us about the things that can be improved. Um, so we held a lot of community workshops, a lot of focus groups, had a lot of ideas um, about what people wanted to see and many people who said, leave it exactly the way it is. Um, before we sent RRM out on a journey to come up with some ideas, we really told them that there were three areas of the park that were really sort of off limits in terms of their consideration. One was the Japanese garden, one was the Great Lawn in the middle of the park, and then the third one is really the Ninth Avenue entry um, into the park where the historic um, coal pump house is located. And then we also gave them um, probably the most significant design consideration, which was you need to try and preserve as much mature trees and landscaping as you can. Um, so those were sort of the marching orders um, that RRM had. After a lot of the community workshops and focus groups, they came up with three um, design alternatives um, that sort of combined a, a various design or suggestions that the public had made. 
Um, so we had another series of meetings in 2015 uh, where we got feedback from the public. We also went to our Park and Recreation Commission and our city council and got direction at that point. And so um, the ultimate master plan that we ended up is really um, a composite of many of the features that we saw in those alternatives. Um, and so through 2016 and 17, we developed the preferred alternative. That's when we also did the environmental review. So it did go through a full CEQA process um, at the same time. Um, and then finally in 2018, we went back to our Park and Recreation Commission and our city council for final adoption of the master plan. So um, that brings us to really the process of how we got to um, 2019, which was really starting um, the first phase of improvements, which I think we had all recognized was going to be the playground redesign. So we had a workshop in October of 2019. Um, and then of course, dur during 2020 COVID um, hit and um, we were limited in terms of our opportunities. And so we wanna get back on track uh, by providing a couple of design alternatives, which are really very, very exciting um, to try and get public input on. So that brings us to today. Um, and if we can flip over to the, this slide here, this is actually the adopted master plan. I know for those of you who are seeing it for the first time, um, you will see some different changes to it. And our, and our plan tonight is not to walk through the adopted master plan, but rather say that this is really a plan that will be implemented over a 10 to 12 year period. Um, and so there will be phases of improvements and obviously um, the first phase will be the, the playground area um, that you can see designated there. But um, we think at the end of the process that there will be a frankly much improved um, Central Park. Um, I think particularly along the Fifth Avenue entrance um, that will really open up the park um, to the downtown area and really create that open plaza. For those of you who are interested in uh, reviewing all of the meeting notes and the master plan document itself. Um, I would encourage you to go to um, the city of San Mateo website and go to the park and recreation department. And there's a project section. Uh, and under that you will see central park master plan. And there is a whole narrative document um, that goes along with the master plan as well as the um, CEQA review that was done. So, um, Right tonight, we're really looking at that, this first phase of improvement, which is really the playground area. Um, and that's why hopefully you're all here to give us some feedback on that. So with that, I will turn it back over to Gina. All right, thank you, Sheila. So as Sheila said, in 2019, October of 2019, we held a workshop in the park to gather some initial feedback on what character people would like to see in the new playground, what priorities they had, and what were some of their favorite types of play features that they'd seen in other parks. So this is that, this, these are some images of that workshop. What we heard at that workshop is that people felt the park should be safe, clean and fun foremost. And then some of the priorities included imaginative play, inclusive play and a natural setting. Um, the top three favorite play features that we heard during that workshop were slides, swings, and climbers. So you'll see a lot of those in the concepts. And then other features people wanted to see were just shade, seating, and sensory activities. So this is the project site today. And another thing we heard was save the trees, preserve the beautiful mature tree canopy. As you can see here, the playground is covered in tree canopy. Um, since this image, we have lost a couple of trees, but for the most part, the canopy is intact. So this is the existing playground, and we will be using that same area for the new playground. The train ride will stay here, no changes to it. And then other existing features um, surrounding the playground, the Fitzgerald Field, the event lawn, the group picnic area, um, those will all stay as is for now in this phase. The restrooms in this phase will be replaced with new facilities and they will be relocated up to this area 
which is the location that they're shown on in the master plan, the adopted master plan. So just a couple photos of the existing playground, the equipment there, um, the beautiful trees. We wit we witnessed countless kids climbing within these ficus tree roots here. So we've incorporated these trees into our designs. So Gab, after we got all of that feedback um, from the workshop and throughout the master plan process, we synthesized those ideas into two concept sketches. So we will be presenting these to you in the following slides. One is called Adventure Village, and that is really inspired by the tree canopy on the site. And then the other one is Playful History, and that is inspired by the history of the site. As you all know, this was the former coal estate, and it used to have a mansion. So this is a kind of a, a sketch that's inspired by that mansion um, here. So I'm gonna first show you the character of the concepts that we're thinking for each one. So the first concept, Adventure Village, these are some of the ideas that we're thinking we can incorporate. One of the things we wanted to do was create this system that really, a boardwalk system that really gets people up into that tree canopy so that you feel like you're in a forest. And we wanted to take that forest a step forward a step further and call it an enchanted forest by integrating some of these whimsical elements. So you'll see some of that in the following plans. Some more features of the adventure village, you have hobbit houses and mountains of stacked stones. You have some natural log climbers, some leaf, leaf shade structures over here, fairy houses, thicket huts, and you'll see all of that in the next plans. So this is a plan view of the Adventure Village concept. So we will be showing some 3D images as well. So just so you know, you don't have to understand this completely, but I'll kind of go through it briefly. Um, so this is the boardwalk that would get you up into the tree canopy. And this is accessible to all people. So you can take the ramp up or you can take stairs. And then there's a number of activities that come off of this boardwalk. As including slides, rope climbers, um, tunnels and bridges. And then here's one bridge here that connects to the swing bridges, which have these tower mounds on either side, connecting to these grassy knolls. So these are elevated and you have numerous activities coming off it, including slides and climbers, or you can just slide right down the knolls. Beneath these knolls are these little hidden hobbit houses. And then below it all is the, are these um, boulder outcrops, which surround a sensory play element. And the details of that sensory play are still to be determined. So one thing I wanna point out, I wanna back up just a minute, is that none of these plans are final. The details are not decided. We wanna hear your input on these. This is all very preliminary and conceptual but we wanted to be able to communicate these ideas to you by showing images and the different layout of some potential designs. So in addition to the towers and the boardwalks and the bridges, we have a music zone. We have these stacked stone climbers that you saw on the previous slides. We have net climbers and a swing zone. We heard that swings are very important to the community. And then we also have a large group picnic shade shelter here. And that's currently in that really sunny area of the park. Um, and then that's surrounded by a deck with picnic and one of your existing mature, mature trees right in the center. And then we also have these sculptural leaf shade structures throughout the playground. On the other side, for younger children, we have the Enchanted Forest Walk. So you go through this and you experience a fairy ring, some of those thicket huts, a fairy house, and all kinds of sensory play that you can really access from the ground level or get up a little bit higher as well. And here's the relocated new restroom that I showed you that I was referring to in the previous slides. And then we have picnic throughout. So in addition to the large group shade shelter, we also have some smaller group picnic areas integrated. Hey, Gina. Yes. Uh, there's, a, there's a question uh, that, that might be good to answer before moving on. Sure. Uh, uh, Mary Lou asks, can parents walk the adventure boardwalk with young children? Yes, that's a great question. So 
The playground is meant for all user groups of all ages. And that's why we have it ramping up so that you could, you could walk up it, you could wheel up it, and it's wide enough for a parent and a child to go up together. And if you get up to the top, then you might sit and have a picnic up on the canopy deck. So yes, that's a great question. Thanks for bringing that up, Lee. So before we show you the, the renderings, which show you how you might interact in the site, I wanted to just briefly um, go over some of the accessible elements of the plan. So we heard from the community that inclusivity is a priority. So we want people of all mobility levels to be able to access the, the different features of the site. So that's why this ramp you can use, that anyone can use, you can get up on the canopy deck and access various features. Um, there will be some things like the stone climbers and some of the slides that might not be accessible to all, but the majority of the site, as you can see from these red bubbles, are accessible to all people. So this is the first view that we wanted to share with you. This would be coming from the group picnic area that exists in the park today. So you would walk over to the center of the park and here you have those tree house towers that we talked about and you have a swing bridge connecting them. Down below you have the sensory play and the little hobbit houses back here. In the next view, we'll get a closer look of those. But then you have this, um, this picnic and gathering boardwalk area with your existing olive tree here. Some of those stacked stone climbers down on the ground here. Um, and then a walking path that goes around the entire park. Off to the right, you have some of those uh, top features for smaller children as well. So this is a little bit closer up, looking up at the tree house towers and the sensory play down below. These are doors to the little hobbit houses. And these are the grassy mounds that you can run up or slide back down or come down off the other side where it's a little bit shadier down one of those really long slides. And then you can kind of see the boardwalk here, but we'll go to that in the next slide. So this is coming from the El Camino Real entrance. You can see the boardwalk a little bit better as you can see adults and children are enjoying that. And then there's these little forts along the way that you can climb up into or slide back down to the ground level. All right, the next concept we're calling playful history. And this is the concept that is inspired by the history of the site and the Cole Mansion. So these are some concept images. This isn't necessarily how we would design it, but we wanted to just give some inspirational images to get you thinking about what this character might look like. So it might include um, some type of mansion focused, structure focused, and I'll show you that a little bit closer, a little bit more realistic of what it might look like in a following slide, but then there's some imaginative dramatic play, some playhouse features, as well as some adventure through climbing nets and zip lines. And then also included in this concept are the sculpt are sculptures, and that is an element that comes from the history of the site as well. I, you probably have found a couple of those sculptures in Central Park still today, and so that would be paying homage to that. And then also um, we had an idea of something you might be able to incorporate, we're not sure yet at this point, but a carousel would go along with this old time old theme. And then we of course would have sensory and interactive play and maybe some type of um, elements that also reflect the gardens of the, the historic gardens of the site. So this is again a plan view of this concept, playful history, and you can see this one has a little bit more of a formal layout, more axial pathway system. Um, at the heart of the plan is, the, is this mansion play structure, which we'll get a better look at when we show you the rendering. And then that is facing a sculpture plaza, which has a number of sculptures around it that um, are reminiscent of the old bronze sculptures. And in the center, we might have some sensory play, which could include water. We're not sure yet at this point. And then that's surrounded by these zones, this adventure zone of zip line and swings um, outlined by a pergola that you could walk down and just watch the activity from the park through a shaded tree lined pergola, which connects to a bronze sculpture garden. And then you can come back around into the activity 
there's going to, there might be a pony carriage and um, up here, a small carriage house. And we'll show you, you'll get a better idea of what those might look like. And then we have the carousel placed over here. And once again, the restroom would be re relocated to this, to the position that was shown that was in the adopted master plan. And this one, we also show picnicking throughout the site, but we're not showing a, 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 sh a shaded, a shade shelter picnic area on this one. Um, you'll find that there might be things that you like from both concepts. And in the next step, when we make one preferred plan, we might take elements out of both. So it's probably not gonna be either or, it's most likely going to be a combination. But you can see the group picnic up at the top of the site here, and then some smaller group areas down there. So once again, just showing that the majority of the features are accessible to all people. And then here is the rendering of what that mansion play structure could look like. So you might be able to go up like a grand staircase that has portraits of historic figures on the walls. You might have a chandelier hanging off down the center. And then you could get up to that a variety of ways up and down through the climbers and slides and um, various catwalks around the structure. Connecting to that, and you might come off the backside on a slide again, and then connecting to that would be a small carriage house that might have a little bit more small, smaller scale with imaginative play, maybe some furnishings and interactive activities in there. And then in the center here, you have the sensory play where people, where children can really get in and manipulate their environment and change it, surrounded by these bronze sculptures, or they might not be bronze, but you know, just the idea of what those used to be. So sort of inspired by that. I'll show you another image. So this would be coming from Al Camino Real again. This might be the pony carriage with a slide coming off the back or you can ride the horses up here. Um, and then off to the right, you see the swings not shown in this view would be the zip line off to the right over there. And then you can see a smaller tot zone, zone back here. And then that would also have a music area. Right. So now we would like to hear your thoughts and opinions on either the design concepts that we've just shown you or any general concerns or things you want to share. So I'm going to switch over to sort of a digital whiteboard. And we're going to ask for you to help us out. And I already see that we have one hand raised. So I'm going to, and it's, let's see, Maggie. Gina, before, I'm sorry, but just before you go. Yes, there, sure. I, I think that one of the other um, sort of distinguishing features about uh, about some of the designs that we came back with is we really want to take advantage of the uniqueness of Central Park. Um, we have 22 playgrounds around San Mateo um, and many of them you could fit into any particular neighborhood or any particular park. I think what is really important about Central Park is that it is its own unique setting. Um, because of the trees, because of, as a, of the historical nature. So I think that that, at least to us, and I know to the RRM design group, is, is that we really wanted to take advantage of that. We don't want to feel as though this is just simply another playground structure that we're going to bring into Central Park, um, but rather starting with the character and the feel of Central Park and then working out from there. So if that helps sort of set the framework a little bit more. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, people understood kind of what was behind um, the, the designs that we ultimately are, are showing you tonight. Yes, thank you, Sheila. I, I appreciate that because we heard from the public that this playground is really special to everyone in San Mateo. So we wanted to really make this playground design stand out and we want your help with that. So anything you have to share, we're waiting to hear. So without further ado, I see Maggie, you have your hand up. So if you wouldn't mind unmuting and then sharing. Hi, thanks for um, putting on this uh, meeting. And Sheila, hi, she used to be my neighbor until recently. Um, 
So I actually, I mean, I like the adventure concept. Um, I think some of the examples that were shown are, you know, with like this sort of dark wood cottagey feel is a little bit dated. Um, and so I, I feel like it's, as soon as we install it, it's gonna look, you know, it's not really gonna look modern, right? And we're dealing with a playground that's been there for 30 years. Um, so I really would like to see something that looks a little bit more modern. And then, um, and then as far as the, the historical plan, um, the second option that actually, honestly, it made me feel a little uncomfortable looking at it. It's like, it's a mansion, it's, a, you know, we're living in an area where there's a huge amount of income inequality and, you know, people are being priced out of the area. So for there to be like a mansion as like the centerpiece and to sort of glorify the history of like someone super rich owning this piece of land, it, it doesn't make me feel like, it's an inclusive place for everyone of all income levels and, you know, um, backgrounds. So, and that, that's, you know, and even seeing like the pony, the pony, like people riding horses, um, it just seems like this very, you know, elite type of um, feel to it. So that would be my, my feedback on that second option. Thank you, Maggie. That's really helpful that your perspective on that. Hey, Gina. Yes. Whenever you're ready, there's some comments in the chat. So just, just let me know when you want to squeeze those in. Okay, I'll take two more comments from Seema and Drew, and then let's do a few chat comments. Seema, would you mind unmuting? Hi, thanks again Hi. for um, having this workshop. Um, I think the the structures depicted in the adventure land, just the activities for the kids to do match a little bit better with what my kids like to do. Like she immediately reacted to the stones. She loves climbing on the stones at Happy Hollow. Um, so some of that more hands on stuff, I think, is really great. Um, I like that the adventure land concept gets people up into the tree canopy, because like you said, that feels really unique to Central Park. Um, the The two things in the playful history, I'm trying to remember the name, concept that also resonated were the carousel and the zip line. I don't know that we have a carousel in any other San Mateo park, so that feels really unique, but I realize it doesn't really match with the Adventureland theme, but something like that I think could be really great. Um, and then the somebody in the comments had a question about what material will be underneath. I think I want to echo that the existing tan bark is the bane of our existence. It, gives the kids splinters, we track it home. So um, any material that, you know, is going to be a little bit easier <laughs> from, from a parent cleanliness standpoint, I think would be appreciated. Do you have a favorite thing from either of the pictures you want to say? Um, I like the swings. You like the swings? Remy, what was your favorite thing from both pictures? I liked everything. You liked everything? <laughs> yeah. I also liked everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Great audience. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for bringing up the materials point. So at this point, no materials, including the ground servicing, have been chosen. So we are, we really want to hear your thoughts on things like that. We did hear quite a bit that people don't like the tan bark mulch in the existing playground at the last workshop. So we appreciate that. Okay, Drew. Hello, good evening. Uh, thanks for having this. Um, so I want to, I'll jump around a little bit, but first I want to echo, there was a previous speaker uh, that said, I, I don't like the, the mansion, um, that being in there, it just feels for a lot of what that, what she said, I, I'm just, I, I much prefer the adventure. There are some, some concepts within or some of the the play things within the mansion scenario that are interesting. And later, maybe if there's time in the meeting, I'll come back to those. But just conceptually, I'm just like, yeah, that's, I, I'd rather the adventure kind of chasing down that. So uh, a couple other just kind of maybe broader type things. I, I think it'd be great. And I don't know the master plan, uh, at all well, so there might be a reason, is to extend somehow across the train ride or into the train ride. Like I saw all the plans, it's like 
integrate the train ride with the the park. Um, I know there's some safety things you got to watch a little bit, but there's a huge circle in the middle. Somehow you get over to that circle, you could do something um, and make that tied in. Um, and then let's see, I think another thing that I know the concepts are great to show, but as a taxpayer, we got to also keep a little bit realistic. So when I hear like the wood deck in the picnic area, I think, yeah, that's cool. But realistically, that costs money to maintain. That costs money to put in, though concrete costs money to put in. I just think that's one of those things. It's better not to show. Um, it, it's just there's not enough money to do the park the master plans in general for parks and recs. And I would trade a wood deck in a picnic area for more something else on the master plan overall for parks and rec. And so, you know, or, or something in the play area, it's just, it's just a value thing. I don't hate wood decks. It's just a value thing that I would do in a different place. So, um, and I think in concepts, showing some of these value trade-offs and some of these concepts helps to, to keep us realistic a little bit. I like to dream, but I also like to keep a little realistic about, hey, we can't spend $20 million on this perfect playground. And I'm exaggerating here on the cost and stuff. So um, I think that's it for now. I'll come back, maybe, you know, see how the meeting goes. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you, Drew. All right, Leaf, do you want to read some of the chat comments? Yeah, uh, I think the first one's probably question for Sheila. Uh, Seema asked, will the train cars be updated? So the, um, the, tra uh, the train itself is actually privately owned. Um, and so we contract with um, someone to actually um, operate the train. I would have to defer the question as to whether or not um, he plans on updating the train to him. So I think it's a good question to capture. Um, but ultimately, because he is the operator and owns the train, um, he would have to make the final decision um, about uh, whether or not he wants to modernize those. All right, thank you. Uh, William asked a question that we've already covered. He, want, he wanted to know what material is planned for the ground cover. Uh, so I think we, we handled that one. Uh, v Navarro asks, will all the slide and zip lines be accessible to disabled kids that use a wheelchair? Um, and I could, I could uh, answer that one for you, V. Uh, I, we're not sure at this point if everything will be accessible throughout the playground. We're making a yeoman's effort to make it as accessible as we can. Um, this, the zip line certainly can be made to be accessible. It's a matter of having a, the correct seat in it, uh, and we can look in. We can look into that. Uh, all the slides, maybe not, but a good percentage of them, yes. Uh, okay. Next, uh, Mary Lou says it's more of a comment than a question. Uh, with the increase in density housing. The Adventureland plans will help children and parents feel like they're in a natural setting, which will be calming in addition to fun. Um, Christine, I'll do I'll do a couple more, Gina, and then we can we can come back to live. Uh, Christine says this looks like great fun for kids. The current adult-oriented monkey bars and pull-up bars on the El Camino side of the park look as if they are being removed. Will there be equivalents in the play and adventure areas that adults will be appropriate for adults to use, will be appropriate for adults to use, and that provide opportunities for adult fitness? Something more interesting and functional than, say, the fitness zone equipment at Coyote Point. So that's a suggestion about uh, some fitness equipment. That's a good, good point, Christine. Uh, hey, Det asked, would it be possible to gate the toddler area or at least the area where the younger children play? Yeah, that's one thing we didn't cover, you know, what areas would be fenced or gated, because um, we're just not at that detailed level of design yet, but we'd like to hear your, your feedback on that as well. 
we did hear in the first workshop that people would like some of those smaller taut areas to be fenced and gated. Uh, Paydet also added on that uh, they agree no tan bark. <laughs> And uh, I'll give you one more for now. Uh, okay. I really like the adventure design where it leverages the trees, the large areas of the central park and provides a lot of activities where the parents and the kids can play together. So that was more of a, a comment than a question. Okay, and Marissa, do you need leave to slow down at all? Marissa's typing these comments as, okay, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can, uh, I can throw it back if you wanna take some more live questions, Gina. There's sure and see that I can go through shortly. Okay, perfect. So Heather has had her hand up for a while. Okay, hi, um, thanks. So I wanted to also second that I am more in favor of the um, whimsical adventure design as opposed to the mansion. I, same thing that some other folks said, I, I don't think having a mansion in the park is a great idea, but I did like um, bringing in the theme of the statues and the animals, and I think that could work really well in the um, adventure theme as well. And then um, if we're talking about materials, I would vote for no sand. That comes home with us more than the, the tan bark. But um, sorry, the other, the other thing is um, that it's important that, that You'd be able to see the higher areas from the ground. We have a, I have a toddler who's, uh, well, a three-year-old who loves to climb. He's very good at it. He does all the big kid stuff. Um, but on some of the parks where they have all these enclosed areas, it's really hard for me to keep track of him. So I would like to throw that in the mix of having, um, keeping the enclosed areas minimal. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the carousel. I'm curious how that would work. Would you have to have someone employed there to run it? Like how would the, would the parents turn it on? Kids getting on and off, like wanting to get on it and having to wait. It, it seems like it's kind of an unnecessary thing um, to have in the park, especially with the train there as well. Um, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, Heather. And I also wanted to point out that in the next portion of, our, of the presentation, we're gonna be having a live poll. So people will be able to um, express their, pri their preferences of which option they like better. So you'll be able to do that there as well if you wanna, that might be the easiest way to do it. All right, do, I don't see any other hands up unless I'm missing some. So Leaf, do you wanna read some more comments? Sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, let me make sure I don't miss any. Virginia says, yes, please have a gated tight area and no bark. Uh, Seema said she uh, wanted to mention the covered picnic pavilion and the deck in the Adventureland concept are really nice and have a unique feel. Uh, and that the bronze sculptures in the history concept worried her a little bit because the kids definitely try to climb them and they looked a little sharp and dangerous for that. Um, the uh, uh, Maggie said she recommends looking at Shane's Inspiration Park in Los Angeles for some ideas. And uh, Maggie, we're actually familiar with with uh, there's more than one of those, so we're, uh, we will we will take your advice on that. Uh, v just pointed out that the new Beresford playground is not accessible. Um, Seema said, "My kids love sand with about ten O's." <laughs> uh, their favorite things to play with and we often take our sand toys to Central Park with us um, but it does follow them home uh, Christine uh, asked she just wanted to specify any spirit of inclusivity uh, that she's hopeful for fitness equipment not simply for parents but for all adults uh, 
and she, she notes that we learned a lot about the public exercise landscape when gyms were closed for COVID. Um, Maggie suggested maybe some sand in a more enclosed area, like at Paddock Park. Um, Christine wants to know, has anyone done any research on the price of carousel maintenance? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't believe we have, Christine. That's a good, that's a good point, and I, I think it's well made. So we'll, we'll definitely write that down and take it into account. Uh, Mary Lou said she suspects many young families will want to visit the park, which will draw people downtown, which is good for downtown business. Uh, William said that he worked at schools where play structures were surrounded by cushioned tiles uh, and they get hot. Um, and then Virginia said she would include in the survey if people want the climbing enclosed as they also have young kids and rather it be enclosed as then they can't fall or jump out. I don't mind if I can't see them if I know it's enclosed. A um, couple more, we're almost at the end of the, the chat here. Uh, Heather really likes the scavenger hunt feature at the new Washington Park playground. Is that in San Mateo? We'll look it up. Yeah, we'll look it up. And then, uh, hey, Dad, Finally, hey, it's the last comment that we have at the moment, uh, says she agrees that the play structure should be more visible from a parent's perspective. That way we can see what's going on and there aren't a lot of hiding spots. It also makes sense for safety issues, especially after dark. And Seema just clarified Washington Park's in Burlingame. Oh, Burlingame, okay. So that's all, that's all so far on the chat. So we got through the list. All right, we have a hand up from Drew again. Hello again. Um, okay. Sorry, just took a minute to unmute there correctly. No worries. So uh, one thing I know you noted it on the, the train ride integrating. I think I want to specify, I think there's kind of like a minimal amount of integrating, just like maybe getting across and having an activity in the middle of something just versus like the train is all super, tunnel you know all this and I think there's a range there and when I was bringing it up I was thinking more probably on more the minimal side not necessarily like like it's so integrated into whatever concept it's just trying to bring because Adventureland had these like kind of bridges and trellises and there's just these different things so is there a way to kind of have a wing that goes over into that general area so um that's I just want to kind of convey more more minimal than changes the, the core concept of what you're doing. So uh, a couple of other things I just want to second or I heard some people say like the adult kind of play or fitness or something with the adults. I know this is the children's playground, but I thought that's wow, that's just it's like the whole family. So some ability, some overlap there. That was cool. That was something I wanted to do. You know, one item that the, the, the mansion version had was the zip line. There were a few others, but I don't remember the picture that I thought was good. So I thought that's, that would be cool. And I think part of it is what I like with the adventure and some people have said it and stuff. It's the trees. You have all this tree cover. So how to get up into the trees and do stuff with the trees and the nature kind of that stuff. So um, I think rides that help that. Anyway, thank you. Great. Thank you, Drew. Um, Gina, if I can just maybe address a couple of the um, questions that came up about a potential carousel. So sure. um, we would view this similar to the train in that we would find a private operator um, to operate the carousel. Um, the city doesn't want to get into the carousel business. Um, we had some very, very preliminary discussions with the, um, uh, the folks who operate the seasonal ice rink um, that, that many of you have seen in Central Park um, during November through January. Um, 
he was at least interested if we were ever wanted to go in that direction um, to include a carousel. So I think that um, if, a, if, it, if in fact the carousel was to ever be included, it would be something that we would, um, that we would contract for and really put the responsibility for maintenance um, just as we do for the train um, at this point. So just a little bit of clarification in terms of um, the city doesn't have an interest in getting into the carousel business. Great, thank you, Sheila. We have another hand up from a, a new comment, hate it. I apologize if I mispronounced your name. Hi, it's Idette. Sorry. Thank um, you. Yes. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that um, both plans look great. I think that pulling from both is going to be ideal. Um, I do agree, though, that hiring a third party is a little more difficult and it's probably going to take more money out of the budget that could otherwise be used for other things that would, would benefit the playground more. So, um, Personally, I would be okay. I mean, I know the carousel is really cool and that would be fun, but you know, it, it's not a big need um, if we could um, get some of the other things on the playground um, that were mentioned, like maybe the zip line or, you know, something else like that. But, um, and also the materials, I think Drew was talking about the cost of materials and, and the, um, you know, focusing on what is sustainable over time and what is going to cost um, a little bit less money to maintain, but it's still gonna be a good quality and it's going to last um, to the wear and tear of all these kids playing on there. And um, I do like the idea of having a, a place for parents to be able to work out and, and, and do some stuff. And the, um, obviously the gated area for the younger kids um, would, would be really nice just because now when we go to Central Park, it, it, it's kind of a free for all and it's hard to um, you know, keep track if, if, if you have multiple kids of, um, especially the young ones that want to, um, you know, just run around everywhere. So, um, but everything looks great. So thank you guys. Great. Thank you. I love all these pragmatic comments. People are thinking of the long term. I have another couple of uh, chats that have dropped in. Okay. <laughs> um, V suggested looking at Magical Bridge in Palo Alto and Redwood City for inclusivity ideas. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and V, we're, we're actually familiar with those, those playgrounds, so we'll, we will keep that in mind. Christine asked if there are a significant amount of SPF shade structures. Gina, do you want to take that? Can you repeat that, Leif? Are there a significant amount of shade structures? She said SPF, you know, like the, the sun. Mm -hmm. Yes. Factor. So we did show shade structures in both concepts. And everyone's going to have an opportunity to comment on things that they like in each concept or things that they would like to change in the concepts. And that will be in the next activity. So if you'd like to see more shade, then please let us know. Okay, uh, Seema said Magic Mountain Park in San Mateo has a fun zip line and an inclusive swing. V said Ed Roberts is a local hero for disability rights and he could be included. Um, and she likes the history theme, but not the mansion. Uh, Maggie, there's a few comments about the carousel here. So Maggie's uh, concerned that it takes up a lot of room and she doesn't want to see that much valuable space to it. Um, Ari says that the carousels will, be, will distract kids from running around and playing. It sounds nice, but mechanically they're fussy. Uh, and then Ari said yes to coffee. <laughs> What's that, not, to coffee? Yes, to coffee. I'm not, I'm not sure what that means, but maybe she can clarify. Um, a little coffee bar in the park, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seema suggested a coffee pop-up. I must have missed it. 
Uh, oh, sorry, you got one ahead of me there, Ari. Yeah. So Seema said, can we ask three bees to operate a coffee pop-up kiosk in the playground? Um, That's an excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then William is kind of on the same carousel uh, refrain. He said it would permanently occupy the space while requiring a fee to use imaginative play space benefits children more than rides. So I think there's a common theme with some of these carousel comments for sure. And that, that's all the, that's everything that's in here so far. All right. I don't see any other hands up. Going once, twice. All right, I think we can move on to the next portion of our presentation then. Sir, it looks like there's a couple oh. more comments if you just wanna check quickly. Oh, thank you, Seema. <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're coming in faster than I can read them. Okay, so thank you, Seema. Uh, Amy said, sounds like we're suggesting park playground ideas have water play areas been suggested. So we did show sensory play in both the options and sensory could mean water or sand or a variety of things. So we would like to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, there's, there is some water alluded to in the, in the plans and uh, we'll come back to the plans uh, in a little bit so you could see where that is. Yes. Um, and then Seema, Seema is making another pitch for coffee, said, uh, Otherwise, you have to uh, drag your kids to get coffee when you need a caffeine fix and they're not happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Seema. Any more? Uh, that's it so far. Should we give it another minute or so? I think we could move on. Okay. All right, so next we are going to use a tool called Slido. Um, and it would be helpful if you had a second device like a smartphone or um, a laptop or an iPad or something like that. Um, not necessary though, you could just use another browser on your same device that you're using right now. But I'm gonna let Yuki take over some of the Slido facilitation, and she can explain to you how to get on. Some of you might already be familiar, but for those of you who are not, she's gonna walk us through the process. Thank you, Gina. So for this activity, you just need to access um, a web browser. So that's Safari, Chrome, um, Firefox, and whatever is out there these days. Um, so you don't need any applications downloaded. So feel free to join us. Um, uh, on your web browser, please type in slido.com um, and that will take you to a page that is going to ask for your event code. Tonight's event code is C0603, C0603. Um, there's no hashtag needed, just those uh, five letters and numbers. Um, another way to get on this page is through the QR access code. Um, which is at the uh, center of this PowerPoint slide. Um, all you have to do is pull up either your QR code reader. Uh, if you're an uh, Apple phone, iPhone user, you can just open your camera application and hover over this QR code and it'll give you a um, pop-up. And that pop-up will take you directly to the event page. Right now, um, you will go to a landing page. And so if it says Central Park Workshop number two, um, you are at the right spot. And we'll give everybody a minute just to get onto that page. And then I will get started on the survey question. And feel free to raise your hand if you're having any trouble getting on and we can hopefully walk you through that. Yes, the chat is still open. Um, and so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please raise your hand or use the chat um, to let us know. We will, um, and, also, oh, sorry. Oh no, I'm sorry. We'll also be posting this survey um, next week and Sheila will go over the details of that. 
But so if you're not able to get on tonight, you will have another opportunity to go to the city's website and log on to the same survey. Yes. So if you are joining tonight's Zoom through um, your laptop, you can open up a web browser separately. Um, and you hopefully you can go back and forth between the two windows. Um, if you have a separate device, um, phone or um, a tablet um, or a separate, uh, um, separate computer, then you can um, pull this up on that device. Um, and again, if you are... Mary Lou had a good idea in the chat. She, she said that maybe you could give us all a thumbs up once you're on. That way we can see if uh, the bulk of the group managed to get on. Sure, that. that would be very helpful. Thank you for the suggestion, Mary Lou. Um, and again, if you are just joining us through your, um, your smartphone um, and it's hard for you to switch back and forth while listening into our conversation, um, my suggestion is to join the survey um, afterwards when it is posted um, on the city's website. And that way you don't have to kind of time yourself going back and forth um, between Zoom and the website. It looks like the thumbs up disappear after a few seconds. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. I kind of memorized, but. <laughs> okay. I think it looks like a good number of people have given a thumbs up from what I was seeing. Does that sound right, Gina? Yes, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think I will uh, give the next or the first question um, to everybody. So the first question is, what are your favorite features of Adventure Village? Um, so on your screen, you should have the first question um, popping up. Um, if you click on the magnifying glass where the image is, um, you can enlarge the image to take a closer look. Um, it's also presented in our um, screen share right now. So this is just for the first concept, which is the adventure village. Um, this is a word cloud question. So if you would, uh, if you could please answer in one word um, or one short phrase, uh, that would be great. And the more, um, the more people uh, use the same words and phrases, that word will um, kind of populate and get larger um, on your screen. So I'm gonna- so This question, you can go back and um, enter uh, multiple responses. So we can see the responses populating on the screen right now. The bridges and the canopy are very popular. The boardwalk as well. So tonight we have a total of uh, 27 participants with um, several of them either RRM or city staff. So, um, and we are at 14 people voting um, on the website. So maybe we'll give it a couple more minutes for people to enter their responses. And you can respond as many times as you want, but if you repeat the same response, then it won't show up. Again, if you miss the code, um, the QR code and the event code are both on the left-hand side of the screen right now. Um, it's C0603. Looks like we have 18 people responding. So that's pretty good. I do have an eye out on the chat, so um, feel free to drop anything in there uh, if you are not able to join for whatever reason or if you have a question. Hi, Dad. You, you managed to get on, right? She says yes. Oh, great. Yeah, we're up to 19 people. Awesome. 
I believe that's that's Maybe most of the participants. Okay. Um, I, I think there's seven staff members. So. Um, I did just just got on. So let's give it a minute. Okay, great. That sounds good. Yeah, and feel free, like I said, to enter multiple responses. So it looks like we have uh, five votes for um, bridges and canopy. A lot of um, people are also following up with boardwalk. Um, more on the canopy, uh, canopy deck, um, tree walk. Um, similar idea, but climbing and tree house. People are in favor of shade. Um, a few people are saying water feature. Um, Drew says, can you go back to overview slide? Sure. Let me just go back. Oops, sorry, too far, too far. <laughs> There we go. Does that work, Drew? This image is also on um, on the website. If you can click on the magnifying glass and then it'll enlarge. It can be still pretty small on if it's on a phone, so. Feel free to ask me to bring any of the images back up onto the screen. And I'm just gonna switch to see if we're getting any changes. We're still at 19. Okay. Should we move on to the next question? Um, I believe so. Drew, were you able to send in a response? I think Drew managed to. Yes. Needs, yeah, I got it. Good. Yes. Okay. That sounds great. And okay. now we can move on to the next question. All right. Uh, which is what would make the Adventure Village design even better? So on that same concept, um, uh, and this is also a word cloud. So if you could enter a word, a phrase, something short, and people can add on to that same word. Um, if, if there's anything that you would like to add or change out, um, Anything that came out from the earlier discussion is a uh, great um, input as well. I'm gonna switch over to the results. And if anybody wants me to go back to the image, let me know. So it looks like zip line is a popular comment um, and also gate for toddler area. Okay, we are quickly reaching 12 and 13 votes. Um, inclusive for adult populations is another popular response. Um, animal statues. Um, bigger water play features, uh, a wing over into the train area center, train station, um, rubber surfaces, more benches, bridge inside train ring, um, more on gated toddler area, ropes course. It looks like zipline is a very popular response compared to the other ones. 
We're at 15 people voting. We'll give it another couple of minutes. I'm seeing uh, some people said running trail outside train track. Uh, Drew would like to see the overview again. Sure. Here we go. Gina, it's on the Adventure Village right now. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah, we're still talking about things that people might want to see changed or added. Okay, we're still at um, 16. Okay. Okay, I don't see any more responses being added. So perhaps uh, we can move on. And if anybody comes up with anything, feel free to drop it in the chat and it's always going to be recorded. Okay, the next one is similar to the very first question we had, um, but on the second concept. So what are your favorite features of playful history? Um, the concept. Um, and again, this is a word cloud poll. So if you could enter in a short phrase or um, just one word about uh, what is on this character, uh, on this concept. And we will have the follow up question of what you'd like to see changed or what you don't like in the, in this concept. So right now we're focusing on what you do like. And Gina, if you could maybe keep the plan up a little bit longer this time. Sure, sure. I always get anxious to see the results. Right. Um, well, we're at nine people uh, sending in responses. Um, and I'm seeing that the music garden, water table, um, and wood climbers are popular. Um, also the zip line. Um, and some other ideas um, being added, or sorry, some other responses being added are the bronze statue, larger slide, sculptures, um, tunnel slide, um, again, music area, um, horse, uh, mansion, water features, Pergola. Okay, we're at 14 people. Gina, maybe you can go to the results slide now. Okay. Yeah, so music garden and water table are still very popular. Um, zip line, um, it looked like a lot of people were suggesting that for the last design. Should we move on to the next question? Yeah, it looks like it's not really moving from 14. Okay. Okay, um, next question. Uh, let me activate that one for you. Uh, is what would make the playful history design even better? So what would you suggest to add or change out of this design? Um, okay. So 
I think it's taking a little bit to load in all of the responses. Oh, I see a comment in the chat box uh, saying water feature instead of a water table um, because it is more sanitary. Um, okay, we have 10 responses. Most popular right now is um, saying no mansion. Uh, water feature, uh, shade cover, rubber surfaces, more slides, more contemporary, fountains to run through, um, non-Western history, uh, tie into the train area, more interactive, uh, better use of space, no water table, shade structures, um, and an, another input saying that they don't support this concept. Okay, we have 14 votes, um, or sorry, responses, which was the same number as last one. So maybe we'll give it another minute just to see if anyone missed out on the last question. I just see another person joining um, our Zoom. Okay, we are at 15 responses. All right, should we go to the final question? I think we're ready to move on. Okay. Thank you for all your response, uh, responses. Um, last question, I'm going to activate that one, is a multiple choice um, poll question. Which playground design do you prefer overall? So we have the two um, concepts that we were talking about tonight, Adventure Village and Playful History. If you could um, vote on one of them um, and let us know your preference. Um, I guess we can leave the concept images on for just a second longer, and then we can see which design is more preferred. Yeah, I think by this point, people have made up their mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was the results. <laughs> <laughs> That's 17 responses, so. That's more than... Um, the previous question. So um, it looks like all of you voted for Venture <laughs> Village. Well, that makes it easy. <laughs> yeah, very good res uh, detailed responses. Thank you, everyone. All right. I'm going to hand it back to you, Sheila, to wrap up with our next steps. Sorry, I, I have a dog in the background. I always have to unmute myself, so uh, I apologize. Um, so um, thank you all for joining tonight. Um, so really our next steps are really a couple things. Um, next week, and we're hoping that by Tuesday um, that we will post the recorded meeting as well as the same survey um, so that there are um, other folks who maybe uh, weren't able to join us tonight will be able to take the survey. Um, it's um, frankly a little disappointing. We had 58 people um, sign up for the meeting and only about 22 or so joined. So thank you for those of you that did. So we'll want to get in contact with everyone else um, that did not join tonight and at least make sure that they know that there is an opportunity um, for putting or for taking the survey, listening to the meeting and all of your comments um, next week. So um, again, we're hoping to have it by Tuesday, um, but please check back on the website um, just to make sure. Um, the other thing is, is that um, we were, were thinking about having an, an on-site workshop at the playground itself um, sometime after June 15th. Um, and so if we do have a, an, um, an on-site workshop, 
uh, we will make sure that we get the information out to everybody. If we do schedule something, it will likely be um, closer to the end of June. Um, but we do want to get as many um, comments and as much feedback as we can um, before we go into the next step. So if you know of other families um, and friends or other folks in your neighborhood um, that were not able to join us tonight, please encourage them um, to check with um, the website next week. Um, and hopefully they'll be able to have an opportunity um, to um, give us some feedback as well. Well, thank you all so much for joining and participating. Maggie has a question. You have your hand up, Maggie. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly mention there are a couple of um, chat messages that um, support having more bike parking. So I don't know if that was recognized. Great, we'll, put, we'll record that, thank you. All right, well, thank you all so much for sharing your time tonight and your thoughts, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you all. Um, we really appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. Good night, everyone.